Good afternoon, everybody. How are you guys doing? You enjoy the show so far? Yeah. Good. My name is Jeff. I'm the president of the San Diego Marine Warrior Society, the organization that's putting the event on this year. So I just want to thank you guys for coming, and I really hope you guys enjoy yourselves. With that said, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. This is a very special individual for us. I want to take a quick moment to thank him for his service to this country. And I think all of you should do the same as well. Yeah! Great job, man. Thank you. Can everybody give me the back? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little soft-hearted, so just, he's got the control, so if he gets loud, it's not on me. Uh, I want to uh, welcome everybody. This is my first public speaking. So I'm being nervous for about the first two seconds, and then after that, I'm rolling into it. Uh, <clears throat> a little bio on myself. I first joined the military in 1982, right after high school. Uh, I stayed here until about 2000. Then I got out, started working for the post office, and ironically, November 12th, I got a call from a, a local reserve unit asking me, well basically they told me I had been recalled and I had reported to a unit to go serve in Iraq. So about the first, first of March, after a two week uh, affirmation period in Kuwait, I dropped boots in Iraq. And you know, I was a little nervous in the beginning. So the first day I was there, a roadside bomb drove up to the gate and detonated it. And you know, that's when when the fun started beginning. I this, this is a normal day for me in Iraq. I had 16 soldiers under me, and this is usually a before or after action meeting, depending on how the convoy. Uh, the security for the convoys that we uh, that we uh, supply for, what we can do to make things better, or what things worse. Uh, I'm normally in telecommunications, but once I got sent over to seas, I became a security uh, security officer and was in charge of convoy security for different units and that's on our own unit to make sure goods and services were delivered to forward observation bases in Iraq. This is me on a mission, and ironically, the day this picture was taken, the vehicle I was in uh, drove past a roadside bomb, and the blast hit me, and my back hit the, uh, as you can see here, it's a gun tub. My back hit the gun tub, and it's sort of like you watch cartoons, you've seen Wally Coyote run into a wall and it slips down like butter. That's what happened to me. When I got back to the base, you know, there was so much adrenaline inside me, I didn't even know what damage was done to me until later that evening when they had to go take a shower and I couldn't move my arm. So I didn't report it to my commander. I got together with my group and we found a way to modify my weapon so I could still go on mission because I didn't want to show no weakness because we had a great bond going on at that time. I sailed there six more weeks after my accident and it came time for promotion, and they lost my promotion papers. So I had to take a PT test while I was overseas. Those who don't know, we're not in the Army. Uh, it's a three-step process. You have push-ups, sit up, and a two-mile run. So I, I had to take this test because if not, it was, it was going to be a great day for me and my future in the military. So I got ready to do the first push-up. I went down, I heard a big pop. I lost feeling from the neck down. I stayed there another two days before they met back me to Germany before they did an x ray and saw the damage that the discs in my neck were bulging into my spinal cord. And from that day, I stayed there two days. They flew me to, uh, to Old Walter Reed in DC and performed this first surgery on me. This is C3, C7 posterior fusion. I stayed in the hospital a couple weeks. They let me go home and be with my family so I could relax and come back. And when I returned, they did a follow-up x-ray on my neck and noticed that the screws had came out. They didn't realize how much damage my discs were to me. So two weeks later, after I got, after everything got situated, this is the second surgery they performed. 
by this time, they had extended the screws from the third bolt of my knife down to the third bolt of my thoracic. And I needed support in my front because I had no support in front of my neck. Again, I stayed in the hospital two weeks, but they kept the eye on me more because they didn't want the same damage to reoccur from that we go home like I did the time before. So I was in the hospital from July 2004 to April 2006. By that time, I was actually thinking I was going back to Iraq to be with my soldiers until they told me my history, my military career was over with. So the doctor was talking to me and he said, you know, I'm originally from Ohio. He said, you got a choice to either move to Florida or Arizona because that would be the best situation for you and your neck. And I said to myself, well, there's no way I'm going to Arizona because I don't have enough desert in Iraq. I'm going to go back to the desert. So I moved to Florida. From 2006 to about 2009 was pretty much the low period for me in my life. <clears throat> I was out of the Army and I was unemployable because I was not able to work. I didn't have that click around me. And at the same time, I was pretty much feeling sorry for myself when I thought everybody owed me something. And during that time frame, that's when I started abusing uh, pills, and I was going through depression, and eventually I checked myself into a pain management program at the hospital. And I found out that the medications that I was on, there's two types of medications that they explain it to me, short term and long term. I, I was on the top four. No matter if I said something was wrong with me, they gave it to me. I was on Percocet, oxycodone, hydrocodone, and I was on eight hour morphine pill. I was taking like six to eight pills four times a day. Let alone with the depression kicking in, I, I started taking my alcohol. And that, I just, you know, I had, there was nothing there for me. Everything was taken away from me. I wasn't taking care of myself, and there was times where I was, I wouldn't even leave my apartment for like two or three weeks. And I had the guy who was my postal uh, postman was prior service. He would he would know because he would come check on me and I would have a stack of mail waiting for me in my uh, mailbox because I just wouldn't go out there to uh, pick it up or anything. A year goes around. Uh, I was coming home from my daughter's and I went to pick up something out of my car. The next thing I know, I was being carried to my apartment. I had passed out in the middle of the street. I didn't even know it. I found out later when I went to go see the guy's wife who uh, picked me up that I passed out again and I was in an ambulance. Got to the VA, found out I had blood clots that had gotten into my chest and I was suffering a minor heart attack and a pulmonary embolism. Stayed there two weeks, give me on blood thinners, try to get everything under control, and I ended up staying on that longer than normal. And I was still fighting high blood pressure because of the pain. They doubled my blood pressure medication, and a year later, I ended up going back to the hospital because my blood was so thin, it wasn't making it to my brain, and I was suffering strokes. Once I went through that rehab, I had to figure out something. I had to do something for myself to make it better. Uh, I was reading an article, I can't remember who it was, I was those refillers, I came across that. They had took a fish tank and put it in a facility for kids who had ADHD and autism, and another uh, one of the senior citizens who had dementia and Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, I'm lucky because I, I experienced both of them because I had a nephew who had autism and my mom is a stage four dementia. And I've seen effects what happened in their arousing system water system like that, how her memory was jumping back and forth and my memory wasn't having all the fits and everything. So I did my research and I met this lady here, Sue, and she told me about the reef club and everything. And while I was doing the research and eventually saved up money, I got my first tank. 125 gallon tank. I call this my basic training tank. <laughs> because I would put, put in, I was glad that I had started something. Um, I treated the fish like they were my soldiers. Every morning I was waking up. <laughs> and then one guy I, I felt responsible for because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, 
just, I just got into it. Nothing pulled me back. During this time, my mind and my body started changing mentally and physically. Mentally, because I was so concentrated on the tank, I was focusing on the pain in my neck. Mm -hmm. At the same time, physically I was changing because every time I would buy a fish, if I saw something, I was putting it in the tank. You know, see something else, put it in the tank. Started leading to high nitrates. And I started doing like two 30 gallon water changes a week to try to maintain everything. Now I was having back pain, but it was a good pain because I was lugging five gallon buckets <laughs> twice a week. 30 times, taking out water, put it back in, getting new water, put it back in. And uh, a lot of, uh, mentally I started getting a little bit stronger. But at the same time, I was insecure with myself. Um, you know, I have a scar on the back of my neck. And it, it started getting to the point where everybody was asking me, hey, what happened to you? And I was ashamed because I didn't you know, talk about me being injured overseas. So I started wearing a lot of collared shirts to hide the, to hide the scar. I had that tape for about a year and a half, and I went upgraded to a 220 gallon tank. This is my MOS tank. This is when I really learned how to get to reefing. I understood with the, uh, the uh, basic parameters you needed to know, uh, how the nitrates, how to start learning about the nitrogen cycle, everything that uh, I needed to know to be successful in the reef tank. The more I started doing this, and then I started getting myself affiliated with the reef club, I started thinking of the reef club as my army family because they accepted me, they showed me the roles, they were there for me. I was getting the same type of support that I was if I was in the army. With this uh, tank, my confidence got a whole lot better. I started believing in myself. I started, uh, I was more successful in keeping the fish, but then I started getting into corals. And after about a, a year, I was with my neighbor, and he's like, man, we gotta do something about that scar. And I was like, I don't know what you wanna do. He's like, we'll look it up, and then that came up with the zipper mat. The zipper uh, is pretty much the whole scar. I felt good about myself, so I didn't start wearing collared shirts anymore. I, I was either getting the best compliments, like, hey, that's a cool tattoo, or somebody would come back behind me and say, hey, your fly's open. <laughs> <laughs> and it's even worse if I had gym shorts on. And I, I'll, I'll look down, it's like, wait, I got gym shorts on, I don't have a fly. <laughs> and I became more involved in my reef club, and I became an assistant to the president during that time. Then, uh, bring it to this 500 gallon tank. I was there when they built it. By that time, my confidence level, I was so, I, I really feel, started feeling good about myself. And I was actually involved and became vice president of our local reef club at the time. Um, mentally, you know, I, I came to the conclusion after a while that. You know, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You want, if you want something, you have to get it, because nothing's given to you. And I, I think that, that way of change made me a better person for me and let alone my family. You know, I still have little problems, you know, I still go through the nightmares. Uh, I'm not good with, uh, like, a 4th of July, unless somebody's in front of me and say, hey, this is going to happen, because if not, you know, it, it, gets, it gets bad. Physically, I was in the best form of my life. Uh, during this time, I had to go through two failed hernia operations. And if it wasn't for this tank, uh, I, I would, it made me less dependent upon the, uh, less, less dependent <coughs> upon the medication. Uh, I forgot one thing, when I started at 125, before I went to rehab, I was on 14 different medications at one time. When I started the second tank, I got down to, I was down to eight, but most of my medications at that time was for my high blood pressure, which I still struggle with off and on. Once I had this tank, I'm down to four. Uh, I have two blood pressure medications, I have a pain medication, and I also have a pill because 
During my surgery, I lost a lot of muscle in my neck, so I had these massive headaches. So I'm fortunate enough, I get like 30 shots of Botox every three to four months. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a learn about balance. And that's what I learned with this tank. Um, once I started getting into the, the heavy corals, then, you know, I had to know how to be balanced with the parameters, what it took to be successful, type of lighting, and everything. And, and me, I started learning how to balance because I would do stuff like yard work, instead of me doing a little bit of yard work, I would do the whole yard work and then the rest of the week I was done. Couldn't do anything. I was just pretty much locked up. And this is where I'm at now. Uh, and currently, as we speak, I am the president of our local marine club. And I have to say, I'm, I'm very proud to, uh, to be a uh, Of the, uh, to have a crew that I take care of as my own family. Um, a year ago, I don't like to talk about this, but I had a, I, can't, I didn't put the, the picture up because it's too graphic. I was out in D.C. attending my first maximum, and somebody vandalized my house. And there's no way I could get back, you know, to handle it. So. You know, it, it took a lot of people communicating with my club. Hey, what's going on? Can we do this? Can we do that? And not knowing what was going on behind the scenes, eventually I found out that they had donated frags. Somebody had wrapped off a fish tank. And when I came home that Sunday, they were putting a 10 camera security system around my house. And the uh, motion sensor light, LED, and I'm forever grateful for them. Uh, I would, they, they're here with me right now. I didn't expect them to be here. They surprised me. And uh, I, I just want to say I love you all. I appreciate everything you do. Um, other than that, I, I want to thank all y'all for attending and experiencing my life and how the hobby has helped me to be a better person than I am. And I will ever be grateful to the sponsors, Magna, Mazda, the San Diego Reef Club, uh, the individuals that helped me guide me through the way, Eric, Mark, his wife, um, you know, I love you guys. Y'all mean everything to me. I know I don't know y'all, but I, I love y'all for attending. I'm, I'm grateful that y'all be here, and I'm honored to share my story with you. That concludes my presentation.
but you know, that all depends on the type of tank you keep, and you know, everybody knows if you have a solar tank, water's got to be dirtier than it is on the SPS tank. So, one thing I did learn while I was in my hobby that where I got now, I, I, I've seen a lot of other people's tanks, and I try to build my tank around them because not everybody, you know, what I do with my tank doesn't mean you can do it with yours. I mean, I mean, I've done some stupid stuff before. When I first set up the 500, it was fully flourished. I had like 20 amphibians in there, different types. I had like 10 different tanks, and I tried this tank in chloride treatment because everybody wanted to get the phosphates down, and I ended up burning the composition. You know, it's just, it's just a learning thing. I think it didn't help any worse that the guy sold me, you know, commercial grade anthony chloride and I was supposed to do some food grade chloride, but that was my stupid part because I didn't read it, you know. But uh, everything I'm based on, I just I learned the basics and then I tweaked it to my time. Uh, I know there's a lot of y'all who've been doing this longer than me. I'm still young and I've only got seven years ago. And I'm still trying to figure out stuff. Okay, Eric helped me out a couple times and Mark does too. Plug for me, of course, and give plug out. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any more questions? Yes, sir? Did the actual uh, sitting down and watching the fish itself provide a lot of relief? Or was a lot of what you're talking about is the action of putting all these things into place? Well, the best way for me, yes. Uh, for me, like, at, at, there was a point in time where I had, I had both meniscus torn in my left and my knees. And, you know, they gave me the medication. I, I noticed that before something happened to me, I was on that medication. I was taking it three or four times a day, like I was supposed to, like on the leg, right there. As, you know, the knee problem was the problem. My problem was when I had the hernia in surgery and it failed. And it took me like two weeks before they realized it failed. That tank saved my life. Was, I, mean, I had to you just sit there. And, and, and again, for me, I can't speak for everybody else, my focus was on the tank. It took the focus off of me. Like when, when I first got out and I was living by myself, all I was talking about was pain, pain, pain. And I noticed that the more I talk about it, the more it happened. And it, it just made me miserable. I was just unhappy. So getting to this hobby has forced me to, you know, put my put my focus somewhere else. To stay away from the bad. And it's, and it's been like that. Like I said, I started June 1st of 2009. <coughs> it's been that way ever since. Like, it took a while. You know, like I said, the basic training tank, oh my God, I should have been in the stockade for that. I, just, I, just, I was buying stuff and killing it. And I didn't care. But then again, I didn't know either until I got to my second tank. And that's when I started paying attention and realized, okay, I know I need to do this, to do this. And at the same time, when I was pacing myself, that's when I learned how to pace myself. When I had to do housework or anything inside or outside the house, because, you know, when I was in the army, when you did something, you just did it, knock it out, that was it, no problem. I can't do that anymore, because if I do it, I'm out for a week school. You know, I'm heat pads and I'm laying there, you know, and it's not a good feeling. You're just laying there and you can't move, you know. That's it. Thank you very much again.